Welcome to worship this morning. We are grateful that we, you are here. We are continuing on in our Easter season. As a reminder, as always, our worship elements will be up on the screens here. Um, and all of the musical portions are in the red hymn, hymnals that are, hymn books that are right in front of you in the pews. Our worship begins with the chime choir. Friends, will you please rise your able?
We are gathered for worship in the presence of the Holy Trinity, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Together as many drawn into one body, we confess our sin to God, trusting our Lord's forgiveness and mercy. Merciful God, we confess our want to wait for others to speak and do. We resist opportunities to engage our neighbors. We hesitate when asked to serve. We assume that someone else will accomplish the task. We deny our abilities and prioritize ourselves. Lord, have mercy. We confess our distance from our community. We create barriers for entry to worship. We dwell in our assumptions and expectations. We speak our discomfort or judgment for any who may live, love, or look different from us. Lord, have mercy. We confess our disbelief that you are transforming the world. We assume that life will continue as it is. We put aside our prayers. We discount your power to create light where there are only shadows. Lord, have mercy. People of God, we know all that we have done and all that we have left undone. Thanks be to God, our Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You are forgiven in the name of the Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be bold in faith. Christ releases you from sin. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord because God is good. God's faithful love lasts forever. Today is the day the Lord has made. Songs of joy and deliverance are heard in the tents of the righteous. Today is the day the Lord has made. <clears throat> we thank you because you answered our prayers because you have become our salvation. Today is the day the Lord has made. The stone rejected by the builders is now the main foundation. Today is the day the Lord has made. This has happened because of the Lord. It is astounding in our sight. Today is the day the Lord has made. Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Let us pray. Revealing God, we thank you for the gifts of creation and the fruits of the earth. Guide our eyes to see your hand in the soil and land. Compel our thoughts to steward our planet in care and love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The reading today is from the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Then I looked, and I heard the sound of many angels surrounding the throne, the living creatures and the elders. They numbered in the millions, thousands upon thousands. They said in a loud voice, Worthy is the slaughtered lamb to receive power, wealth, wisdom, and might, and honor, glory, and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. I heard everything everywhere say, Blessing, honor, glory, and power belong to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb forever and always. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. The word of the Lord. I don't know where you are at when it comes to the whole idea of riding a roller coaster. I will say that I'm not a fan. Um, but I say that in the same vein that um, in my teens, I rode roller coasters. I'm just making that confession to you now. It's something I didn't enjoy doing, but I did it. You know, peer pressure and all of that. In my teens, as a Boy Scout troop, we would go to a place called Adventureland. It was in Iowa. They must have had a Boy Scout rally or something there. I truly don't remember why we went. But we went there every year, and we pitched our tent in the grassy parking lot outside of Adventureland. And then we'd, of course, of course, we would go in and ride the rides. And one of the years that we went there, they had these brand new looping rides and up and down and all that kind of stuff and, and did a whole bunch of circles, and, and I had no interest in that. But a group of us decided that we were going to try to see how many times we could ride this one ride that was basically abandoned by everybody because it was... Well, it was kind of a 1950s rickety all wood. I mean, it was one of those kind of rides where you can, as you're riding it, you can hear it slowly degrading and deteriorating with every lap around. So it was kind of a bit of an adventure in and of itself. But beyond that, we wanted to ride that ride because nobody else was on it. And we wanted to see how many times can you ride this ride in one day. And I think we got to 14, 15 or something like that because we would go up and you get to the landing, and you get into the car, and as happens with every roller coaster, down came that bar. It slaps right down on your legs, and you're held in place. This was a really simple ride. It was just kind of an up and down. Didn't even really go that high. It was high enough for me, but it was just enough to get enough speed to do a couple more, loop around. It took about, I don't know, 30 seconds, and you're done. Whether or not you have ever been on a roller coaster, you know the bar that safety bar, that supposedly OSHA-approved metal bar that falls down on your lap and keeps you in place no matter where you're going. Now, better rides today, the ones where even where you're being held in place and being launched or being thrown or being sent into the air or down into the ground, now they have some lap belts or they might have a five-point harness. Whatever it is that holds us in place in the midst of these rides that either we really enjoy or we really don't, I want us to invite us to keep that image in our minds, that we have this lap belt, we have this bar, we have this five-point harness that is holding us in place, being held close to God as we read Revelation. Because for the next few weeks, through the end of May, we are going to be reading and working through this letter, this book that I know some of us may not enjoy. We may not want to read Revelation. We may have fears and dreads about Revelation. I will tell you that in worship, we're only going to be really reading the fun parts, the worshipy, Jesus-y parts, but there are other parts. We know the other parts. 
There's authors across the continent who have made lots of money telling us about the other parts, the symbols, the dragons, the horns, the the stars, the trumpets, the seals, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and, and all of that stuff. Some of that is in Revelation. Some of it actually isn't, but it's put in just to, I don't know why, but make Revelation sound even more interesting than it already is. But Revelation is a wild ride. Whether you've read it or not, whether you know much about it or not, it is a crazy experience to go through, in part because we don't know what all the, all the symbols mean. It wasn't written for us. It was written 2,000 years ago for a completely different audience. Specifically, it was written for seven churches. So it's one of those readings that we go to once in a while, and we're not quite sure why we're there. But as we go through Revelation, as we go through life itself, we remind ourselves that we are being held in place. That no matter how crazy the ride gets, God is with us. We are being held in faith and love. So as we enter into Revelation, we're in chapter 5 this week, so obviously there's four chapters that we're not reading. But I want to invite you to read all of Revelation, even if you need to read it in parts. One thing I want to let you know right away, it is not about the end of the world. Again, people across the continent have made lots of money telling us that it is, that it is about the end of the world, it's about these end times, it's about this moment that is coming when God will reclaim creation and in doing that will destroy everything. That is not what Revelation is about. Revelation is about people who are being persecuted. It's about people who are being oppressed. It's about people who are being told that their lives don't matter because they don't have economic power, they don't have political power, they don't have civic power. They have to defend their lives, defend their livelihood, defend their identity. Dare I say, defend their skin color and who they love and how they love. All of that was present even 2,000 years ago. But in the midst of that, because of that, because we humans do have a propensity for destruction, along comes war, and along comes threats of war, and along comes loss of life. That's what's happening in Revelation. Revelation is telling us about the lived experience of people, even today, who are told that their lives don't matter, and because their lives don't matter, life comes to an end. Fear rises. Desperation rises. Doubt rises. Disbelief in God rises because of what we humans will do to each other in the name of fear, in the name of power, in the name of presence. Revelation is written primarily for people who are suffering, people who are longing for hope, people even in this community, even today, who might be struggling with shelter, who might be struggling to get by, even if they're working two, three jobs, but don't have health insurance, or always dreading the idea that they might one day get sick or their kids get sick. It is about our people in this community, our people who we know, who are told that their lives are diminished, their dignity is taken. So it's quite possible that when we read Revelation, one, we're not the primary audience, but two, if we find that in our daily lives we have our struggles and we have our sufferings, we have our disappointment, but generally we are okay, we may not find ourselves connected with this reading. Revelation was written specifically for seven churches. It was written to be read in worship. So we're only going to have like little snippets, little glimpses along the way, chapter 5 this week, chapter 7 next week, chapter 21, chapter 22, just little glimpses of the whole. But it was meant to be read in worship. It's meant to be a worship experience that we share in. And of the seven churches that it was written to, some of them are suffering. So when you go through those first four chapters before you get to the one where we are at today in worship, you are going to hear about these different churches that are struggling, struggling because of economic disparity, struggling because the the environment around them is being destroyed by the Roman government and by their oppressors. There is even climate change, global warming language in Revelation from 2,000 years ago. But there's also this one church, Laodicea, Now, God is speaking through Revelation, through John, the author of Revelation, and speaking directly to these seven churches and talking to you and me today. And Laodicea, one of the churches, God says to them, You are neither hot nor cold, you are lukewarm. How I wish that you were hot or cold so that I knew where you stood. Which means even in that time, as some churches are suffering, if some of God's people are suffering and being persecuted and being denied life, there are others with the same faith, 
with the same connection to God, who aren't hearing the voices of the persecuted, who are not responding, who are not recognizing these voices of suffering in their midst. Revelation could be for us a conviction. It could be a challenge because we are being called upon to hear the voices of those who are often not heard, the voices of those who are denied life, denied dignity, denied a place in our culture, our community, maybe even this church. So as we work our way through Revelation, and even today in this reading that we have, we hear about creatures, we hear about elders, we hear about angels, and then we have all these weird symbols that we don't quite understand. And some of it we will never understand because it was written for an audience 2,000 years ago. But here's what we know. That suffering that happened then continues today. Destruction that happened then continues today. Devastation that happened then continues today because it's... It's what we do. It's what we humans are good at. We are good at creating divisions, creating chasms, creating barriers between ourselves and our neighbors, between ourselves and people in our midst, between ourselves and and people across the planet who we feel we have no connection to. It is a challenging text. This entire vision, and it's one vision, one revelation that goes from chapter one all the way to the very end. They're hard words. They're painful words. They connect us very deeply to the brokenness of this world and they're inviting us to hear words and hear visions and hear ideas that we may not always see. And at the same time, Revelation is meant to remind us that we live in two realities simultaneously. There is here on earth, the suffering, the destruction, the devastation, the barriers that are put between people who are black and brown and indigenous, people who have a different skin tone, a different ethnicity, a different ethnic background, maybe a different gender identity, a different way of of loving and living in this world, all these barriers that we create as humans between age groups and between gender groups and between, well, you name it, we will find a way to create a wall. All of that existed then and all of that exists now. That is here on earth. At the same time, in the same breath, there is this ongoing worship that is happening in creation. Now, we talk about this in worship. We don't lift it up all that much because it kind of gets into the mystical realm. And let's face it, we Lutherans don't hang out in the mystical realm a whole lot. But we do confess it in the Apostles' Creed when we talk about the communion of the saints. We talk about how when we gather for worship week after week, when we gather around this table week after week, we are participating in an ongoing worship event. It never ends. Jesus is the one who feeds us at this table. It's the same meal that is fed to the disciples the night before his death on the cross. You and I are joining in an ongoing, never-ending, everlasting worship experience, and that is... That's the bar across our laps. That's the seat belt that holds us in as we are on this wild ride working our way through Revelation. We get these glimpses in chapter five, chapter seven, and various points in Revelation. God wants us to know that as we are going through these moments of war and devastation and destruction, that at the same time, God is in charge. The revelation is not about war. The revelation is not about persecution because that already exists. We already have war in Ukraine. We already have a civil war in Ethiopia today. We have had wars across this planet. We have had devastation and destruction in this country. We have people who have lost their lives simply because of who God made them to be all across this planet that already exists. That's not the revelation. The revelation is that in the midst of what we know, God is also in charge. God is claiming creation. God is at work in this creation. God is at work in this worship moment. God is at work in you. God's faithful, God's beloved. God transforms us. God is destroying death so that we can live, so our neighbors can live, so our coworkers, our classmates can live, so that we can recognize hope in this world. Revelation is meant to give us a glimpse that in the midst of suffering and disappointment and fear and betrayal and disappointment, in the midst, we can see God. We can know that God is at work, that God is moving, that God is breathing, that God is bringing life. That's the revelation. That's the unveiling. That's the great awakening that's happening in this letter, that in the midst of everything we know, 
God is here. That God is at work. That God is the one who has claimed us and loved us and transformed us and continues to move in our lives every single day. We humans, we know what we can do. We know what we've done. We know what we will probably continue to do every day of our lives walking across this planet because we as humans are prone to destruction. We find barriers and divisions and ways to cut each other off. It's what we do. What God does is continue to claim us and love us and transform us and draw us into this everlasting worship. Chapter 5 reminds us that as we are moving through this world, God has us. God is holding on to us, and God is holding on to the persecuted. God is holding on to the oppressed. God is declaring love and dignity for every person in our lives and in creation who is told that their life does not matter. God is at work. And so as we make our way through Revelation, we are given these glimpses. We're given these opportunities to leave this space looking for God, trusting that God is already there, giving us a vision and an awakening and understanding of God's movement in our lives and God's movement in this community. So that maybe we, at some point today, or maybe at some point this week, we can join in creation, in this ongoing worship, and we can find ourselves with great confidence and great work, great hope within ourselves, that we will stand in the midst, knowing God is with us, and God is with us, the oppressed and persecuted, and we will find the strength to say amen. Friends in faith, will you please rise and we will join the hymn. Friends, on behalf of creation and with creation, in the midst of our communities and for all of us who are gathered here, we offer our prayers to God. Let us pray. Revealing God, we thank you for giving us voices to sing your praise. Guide our hearts to sense your nearness. Open our thoughts to remember your forgiveness with every pitch and tone. Make us bold to proclaim your unbreakable promise of life. Revealing God, we pray for our community. In the midst of strife and distrust, bind us to each other in love. Silence our words of judgment that we can once more see your face in the life of every person we encounter. Revealing God, 
We pray for our teachers, administrators, maintenance staff, bus drivers, front office workers, kitchen personnel this week. We give thanks for their dedication to our students in our community. Revealing God. We pray for lands and people torn by war in Ukraine and Ethiopia. We pray for Nicaragua, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras enduring long-standing internal violence. We pray for tribes and places whom we will never learn about. We pray for your peace that elevates life and dignity. Revealing God, we pray for all those who are sick and suffering, and we offer to you now their names out loud or in our hearts. Lord, with all of these, we also remember Bill, Helen, Vlad, Charlie, Gladys, Ellie, Jackson. We pray for Mark in his, and his family as he prepares for his final hours. Gracious God, receive these prayers as, that we carry with us and offer our mercy and love. Confident that you know our every concern, we close these prayers as together we say, Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share that peace with your neighbor. Please be seated. I invite you to grab a bulletin if you have not yet. It has a variety of different things that are going on in the life of our church over the next few weeks. Also, we have our, our monthly newsletter, and if you are not receiving that, please let us know. We will get you on the mailing list and be sure to get you a copy that has even more details. But a couple of things just to make us aware of. In worship all this month, our noisy offering, our ministry in focus is our Strong Girls to Women camp, um, continuing to build up the um, fund that we have for that uh, to support that incredible ministry. We have already been receiving registrations, so we're getting excited. We've got some speakers lined up. We're getting excited for that. It's the first week of June. All the pertinents are right there in the bulletin, but I also just want to lift up to you this lovely little QR code right here. You can take this bulletin, and you can take it to whomever you might know who might have a strong girl in their family who is in grades four through six, and you show them that QR code. They click it. And about five questions later, they're in. Strong Girls to Women is our, it is absolutely free. It's a day camp that we offer here. Um, this year, we're focusing on nature. So we're looking for continuing to um, sign up speakers, keynote speakers, adult women who do some really cool stuff out in nature. Um, so they're going to be coming every day and hanging out with our strong girls and, and doing some really fun stuff. We are, we're really kind of getting excited about that. Along with this summer, with Strong Girls going on, and VBS will be coming up in July. We are also doing our summer lunch program. So we are officially registered. The next big step is now done. What that means is we will continue to be looking for our volunteers. That is all y'all. We are every Tuesday and Thursday starting the first week of June. If you are available, we would love for your help. We're going to be serving out on the lawn, weather pending. If weather is not pending, we will be inside in the basement feeding our neighbors. So if you have an opportunity, call the office. We will be getting an online sign-up uh, built hopefully this week for you as well. For all of us here, um, if you're in the mood, if you didn't know about it and are in the mood for doing something spontaneous today, right after worship, uh, we are going to be heading down to LOMC and we're going to be helping them spread mulch. Some of y'all I can see are dressed and ready for the work already. Um, other of us will have to change. And if you don't want to change, don't worry about it. Mulch, you know, it washes off as well. But right after worship, if you have any interest at all and wanted to know what we're going to be up to, uh, join us Right down the hall and right to the left, we have a, a multi-use space, our chapel space. You'll see a big table in there, several tables in there. Just hang out in there, and we'll tell you where to go and what to do and what it's going to look like. Also, while you're in there, this week, 
On many calendars, it might say Teacher Appreciation Week, so we thank our teachers. As a community of faith, we are going to be thanking the DLR staff, our school that's here in town. And so we have this big banner that's spread across a couple of tables in there. If you wanted to draw a picture, if you want to color in one of the letters, if you want to write a note, whatever you want, we have that banner for them. We are going to be giving that to our, to our DLR staff on May 18th because we as a church are going to be giving them ice cream sundaes that day. So there again, back of your mind, coming up a couple of weeks from now, if you want to help out with that, talk to the office, talk with me, we will find a spot for you. So there is plenty going on. There's plenty more that I didn't even mention that's in here, um, also in our newsletter, making you aware of all of that. Will you please rise as you're able, and we will prepare for communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and when he gave thanks he broke it gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me after supper he took the cup and when he gave thanks he gave it for all the drink saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins do this in remembrance of me confident our Lord is at work in this meal we offer the prayer that he taught us our Father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you. Thank you. 
the blood of Christ shed for you. As we're sent forth from the garden, let us pray. God of life, make yourself known across the hours and days. Reveal your presence in neighbors whom we encounter and in faces that pass across our screens. Open our eyes to witness your compassion. Open our ears to hear where your justice is needed. We offer this prayer in your holy name. Amen. of his grace. The name of Jesus charms our fears and bids our sorrow cease. Sings music in the sinner's ears, brings life and health and peace. Look unto him, your Savior own, O fallen human. Justified by grace To God all glory, praise and love Be now and ever give By saints below and saints above The church in earth and heaven Today is the day the Lord has made May you hear songs of joy and join in the choir. May you know God's mercy as you pray. May you be astounded by the vibrant sights of life all around you. Be blessed in the name of the Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit this day and every day, wherever you may go. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, go in peace, seek the Lord. Thanks be to God.